Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Welcome to part three of our Scarecrow um, video and I just have to do a slight adjustment. So just bear with me um, talking about next live streams that are coming up after this one. Um, sorry, I knew that wasn't quite ready this morning. Some of you might have spotted it, some of you might not. However, I will be ready in a minute. Just, um, I will be talking about the next live streams coming up in a minute again, but um, um, this is better, right? You haven't noticed the thing. Yes, one of those uh, days where, um, well, what actually what threw me entirely was I lost the straw hat of the scarecrow and um, I flicked it and it fell somewhere in the room and I was on my hands and knees and so I had to tidy up just to get to find the, the straw hat and everything um, got delayed after that. So apologies for um, a slight minute delay. Um, we've got a full house today again. Lovely. I'm going to have a look in a minute who is there. But if you don't know why you're here, you're here to finish off um, our scarecrow. This is part three of the needle felted scarecrow. This is what he's going to look like. When he's finished, he's got his straw hat on, he's got hair, he's got a scarf around the neck and he's got three little mice poking out of his top. And all of this um, from the Scarecrow pack, which you can still get on our website, that's still available to purchase. And of course, all of our live streams are staying on there as a as a permanent um, feature. So you can um, rewatch it anytime in the future. And um, if you're watching this live today, we do these every Tuesday at 1 p.m., the live streams, and there's always a price to be won as well, which I'm going to talk about in a minute too. And I've got lots and lots of this. One of the re other reasons why it took me ages to get ready. I've got lots of new and exciting um, bits here behind me, which um, I will be talking about throughout the live stream as well. Let's say hello to some of our regular and maybe you new um viewers we've got i've got a very naughty witch here as well which i keep keep wanting to um be cross-eyed because she's hanging there right next to my head and she's she's learning she's learning how to do um magic spells and witchcraft and so she's wondering if she can learn something from me watching me um needle felt because it's a it's a little bit like magic so anyway that's what she's doing we've got diane here hello diane and emma is in the house um, she's in my ear, so if you've got any questions or if you need to know anything, then do let us know. Um, that way, Helen is there. Hello, Helen. Hope you are fine. Um, Serena is there. Hi, Serena. Um, we've got um, Ashley there. Hi, everyone. I'm behind on my scarecrow. Only just started to felt again. I sadly lost one of my dogs last week. Oh, no. But at least he no longer in pain it's the saddest thing ever I don't even want to think about if anything happens to our dogs I just keep pushing it away um it's it's horrible absolutely horrible my heart goes out to you Ashley hope you're okay you now vampire venom is there hello Jan is there Meg Laura um now what did um what did um what did you call me again a felting fairy godmother, <clears throat> which is um, which is lovely. I I yeah, I, I love that phrase. I want to be a fa <laughs> imagine you have a business card and you hand it out, and as your job title underneath it says, a felting um, fairy godmother. That I want that. I want that. Um, Jane is there. Hi, Jane. Um, Catherine is there. Catherine, was it you who won so many different um, prizes in the in the in your local? Um, it's like a um, Oh, what is it again? What's it called? Like a um ah, oh, forgotten the name now. Anyway, you you put all your produce and your products out and you win a prize, but you did it with your felted um items, didn't you? And and you won lots of prizes. Um and um Alison is there and oh that's a new name. Sanshraf. Um hello, nice to have you here with us. And also Rose is here and uh another Catherine and um, yeah lovely so lots of people are here and let's uh, go straight into what happens normally on a Tuesday and then get this particular live streams get gets restreamed um, to Facebook at 7 p.m. on the Thursday so today is the 31st of um, August I cannot believe we're already at the end of August and um, and uh, at 7 p.m. on the 2nd of September uh, this whole live stream will be restreamed over on Facebook which is usually um, watched by Hannah and um, and on, on that particular live stream on Thursday you will also have a chance to win a prize which is the prize for today 
is going to be. You can win yourself a little witch pack, which um, we are supporting with a live stream. So once you've got the pack, very similar to the Scarecrow, you can um, join me and make the little witch. And what we would like you to tell us is what is your favorite maker's product and why? Tell us why. This can be fun filled or it can be dead serious. Whichever way, just tell us what is your favorite maker's product and why. And remember that we are drawing um, a winner at total random and um, and I will let you know when Emma is ready to draw um, to draw the um, the competition winner and similarly with Hannah um, on Thursday. So very exciting. Now if you uh, let's just talk a little bit about what you can see here just oh yes and this is what you can win this is the witch pack which you probably want to to see as well. So you, it comes in a flat box it has got um, everything in there to make the little witch, including the instructions in our usual style. Lots of um, um, lots of wool in there, and then you get your broom in there as well, and you get the witch hat as well. Lots of purple curls, and um, and that's basically all you need to make the little witch. And that is up for grabs today in the competition. So do tell us what's your favorite maker's product and why. And as always, we don't take ourselves too seriously. So if you want to make make it funny, feel free. I can always use a laugh. Always, always, always. And um, so that is, that's, and she's here. There we are. Now, we have now available. You can go now to the website um, and buy yourself new kits, new packs. Let's start with kits. We've got our new small needle felting kit, which makes um, one seal. Now, this can be the seal with... Um, with sort of baby flecks on it or it can be a pure white seal you choose doesn't have to be one um, doesn't it can be one or the other so it makes one seal that's available now on our website we also have got a kit that makes just one penguin love these penguins they're my absolute favorite oopsie topsy-turvy toppled off um, I love them particularly I think I've told the story before but it's a sad story but I also love the story um, I made I designed this penguin because somebody said their nephew um, absolutely loved penguins and he died uh, very sadly as a as a late teenager and she said she wanted a penguin to put into his grave and I made I made a penguin um, and it was that's the, that's that, and I will never forget it because that is um, what got me to design the penguin. And he's um, he's lovely. He really is. I love him with his um, wind blown um, scarf. Now the snowman is one of my favorite projects because he, you can make so much fun um, of his face and what he looks like and his expressions. And we've turned him from a medium kit to a small kit, so it just makes one. Perfect. It's really full. That kit's very heavy. Lots of wool in there and it's a decent size of a snowman. So that's new kits. Then, of course, everybody's been waiting for the, for these um, elves too. And they're trouble. They're double trouble. They're definitely double trouble. You can make two out of the pack. And the pack itself is small size like our witch and our fairy boxes, same size. And it makes two. You get everything in there with the exception of the tools to make these two troublesome e fair, um, elves. And um, they're very helpful if you give them jobs. So otherwise they're just at each other all the time. Look, he's he was just gra grabbing his, um, his leg and uh, pulling his leg. And um, they have posable hands and you can actually position a white ball in there for a snowball fight. And um, so these two, they are basically, um, they are best friends and, um, and also at the same time, constantly um, squabbling, a bit like my children probably. They love each other dearly, but at the same time, they would hate to admit it. So we would love to hear what your what your double trouble elf stories are when you get to make um, these beautiful two elf characters, which um, I'm absolutely loving. So let's, let, let's have them um, sit together nicely for a change. Behave yourselves. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. And then, um, of course, we're getting ready for the pumpkin makes. You can get your pumpkin pack, which is a big whopping uh, bag of wool. Makes, um, I can never remember, but it makes over 30 mini pumpkins, like the ones strung up here behind me. Or you can make a big pumpkin, which, of course, we're going to show you how to do this during one of our live streams, which I showed you at the very beginning. 
Um, so that's all. Oh yes, and it's the last day today. Don't miss out on the panda bear cup, sleepy and lounging around. He is still up for grabs. Last day, our maker's box. As of tomorrow, which I'm doing the unwrapping, you will get your um, puppy to make. And then the um, there's, there's the little fairies. I've seen beautiful pictures of these two fairies. They are absolutely, um, yeah, they're really fun. Really, really lovely. Um, little fairy. So last day, if you're watching this on Thursday, you've missed it basically. So get it um, quick before it's too late and um, let's move on to our scarecrow. Right, first of all, I have got, um, this is all I've got left from my pack. So I've got the hair wool, I got that out because we need that later. I've got my straw hat which caused all the trouble this morning because I dropped it. Um, I've got some red wool which will make the scarf for the scarecrow. And then I have got, I've still got some orange left from his nose, which I probably won't need, but I've got lots of wool left that I made the hat with. And I've got um, a little bit of black, which will come in handy for the mice. And also these two other shades of brown. And this is what we will need for the mice because we're mixing the colors to make different color mice. Um, in fact, you could use the colors as they are, and then you've already got three different color mice, but you can also mix the colors. And so I'm gonna keep that to one side for now because we do need to give our scarecrow a scarf now. So last time we have made his legs and his boots, we've stuffed him a little bit more in his on his body and we've secured the head so it's not wriggly, wriggly and jiggling around anymore. And so the first thing I'm going to do now is, but I will just check my instructions because that's what I'm meant to do. I'm going to make the scarf and I'm gonna go overhead, um, well, not personally, but the camera will go overhead where I can show you um, what you do, how to make the scarf. So you can just make a really thin scarf. You don't have to use all of the red or you can make a long scarf. Maybe you want to make a bow tie. That'd be fun to make a bow tie. In any case, what you do need to do is you need to lay your wool out and then stab into it. Now, whenever you make anything that's flat, especially when it's just wool and you stab it flat on your mat, it does go, the fibers sink into the mat and it will fasten itself into it. So at some point, not too far in the in the distance, you need to lift off what you're felting. The um, earth-friendly felting mat is actually brilliant for felting straight into because it doesn't sort of quite grip the wool as you imagine it might be gripped by um, some of the other felting mats that are out there. It is actually, it sort of lets go of it quite willingly. And uh, remember, if you do have fibers that get stuck in the um, earth-friendly felting mat, then do use your brush to remove them. And all you're going to do is you're just going to keep consistently stabbing along this um, this strand of red wool. You can use your multi-tool if you want to speed things up. I've got my five um, clover needle felting tool. Um, of course, that will also mean that the fibers get pushed into the mat. So you do have to lift that off, felt it from both sides. And um, you can make it thick or thin. That's entirely up to you. Sort of slightly going in at an angle from the side to make sure it's not getting too fat. Making the sides slight, slightly um, more neat. And now you can see that I'm leaving a little bit of this fiber behind. And that's fine for now. And um, if you've got a three needle felting tool, you can do exactly the same thing as well. So either uh, use your clover three needle felting tool or failing this, I, I can't see mine here at the moment, use your um, blue three needle felting tool. Either way, they will um, help you speed up getting that strip of wool felted down nice and neatly. And remember, lift it off. It, the lifting off will become easier and easier as, as you are making a firmer and firmer fabric. Needle felting the wool flat. So either multi-tools or just a single needle, whichever you prefer, whatever you've got to hand. Um, the single needle obviously takes a little bit longer because you've got to do more steps to get the same, um, the same number of steps. And when you've got a nice firm fabric, you could actually fold this in half. That's entirely up to you. Or you can keep it as it is. If you want to, if you make, if you're um, 
if you're folding it in half, you can make a, a na more narrow, narrower scarf, and it might look a little bit neater. So in the instructions, I kept it as non-folded. I'm folding this one now. You might also have a really thick neck of the um, scarecrow. Now the um, we've just had a question asked, and that is whether we are going to stock the black cape merino. Now the black cape merino we have used. And I'll just show you quickly here on the overhead camera on the panda bear. Um, we've already got the white Cape Merino. It's a very short fiber, super fluffy, super soft, almost like cotton wool feel to it, um, fiber. And um, and then we have got the same in black as well. So the black one basically um, works so well for the panda together with the white. It makes a really neat um, distinction between the two. And the question is, are we going to stock this? We, um, I don't think we've quite made a decision um, about this yet. I will have to check in in HQ whether, whether we have got any black left, whatever we have left, we can stock and then we might um, buy it in as well. So maybe um, whilst I'm here, maybe Emma can come up with um, an answer to that. If we've got any black Cape Merino left, if we've got any left, we will certainly stock what we have left and, um, and then we see what the demand is. We might stock it forever. Who knows? Right, I'm still felting my scarf here. So um, the ends are left quite wispy at the moment. Now you can you can felt them down um, and fold them in so that you have a nice um, straight edge. If you make a really, really solid scarf, you could even cut into the edge at the very end to make fringes or um, like a fringe, like a few strands that are sort of, so it looks like a proper scarf with a, a fringe at the end. And, um, or you can just leave it as it is. Um, I think if you're making a bow tie, I would say make a really, really tight, small fabric, um, thin fabric rather, it doesn't necessarily need to be small, and then tie it into a bow tie. And um, once you felt it that flat, and it's an it's it is literally um, a, f a a felted piece of fabric. Then you just basically put it around your scarecrow's neck like that. You can put a knot on it if you want. This is quite short actually. There, and then um, just to make sure it does it stays on, you can give it a few stabs all around and felt it down. See, I could have almost made a wider scarf, but I'm just going to cover the back with um, hair there. And that um, basically uh, concludes the, the scarf here. And I've got a bit of red left, so I could have used more. Now, the next thing we're going to do is putting the hair on it. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that we have got um, quite a lot of this white wool left. So if you wanted to give your scarecrow a bigger head now, you could do that. That's not in the instructions. This is completely made up by me now. To do this, I show you a technique how you add bulk to um, an existing shape. So I've torn off wads of wool. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to felt them onto the back of the head. I want I want the head to be rounder at the back. So I'm obviously not going to go over the face because that's already finished and felt that down the around the edges first. You could do this before you add the scarf, but um, it's fine in my case here. And um, I'm just going to give him a slightly rounder head at the back, so make the head bigger by adding bulk around the back of the head rather than um, adding it all over. And I'm just stabbing it in on the edges first so that um, the, the wool um, the, the wad of the wall is attached and then you can stab all over and you might have to repeat the process if you want to make the head even even bigger. That's entirely up to you. You won't have to use any of this um, color wool other than for making teeny tiny wincy little mice and they really don't take um, a lot of um, a wool at all. There we go. And I'm not even going to felt this down super solid because the hair that I'm attaching in a minute will just take care of that as well. So just felt it down. And that actually has made a, a, quite a big difference. The head definitely looks bigger now. It's got a bigger forehead. And um, yeah, so you can make the head bigger even later, which is one of the things I totally love about needle felting is that nothing's ever kind of really 
doomed to be it. And I'll just also show you while we're on the overhead camera, I'm just going to take care of that bit of wool that's on there. Take that off with um, the um, brush that we use for this. Totally love this brush. It really does keep my um, earth friendly felting mat clean and, um, and takes care of any of these sort of extra fibers. So I'm taking these off now. There will be a level of contamination. You can't ever get it completely um, white again, but it really stops any sort of contamination happening to onto your felted um, project, project. So it's a really good um, solution to keep your earth-friendly felting mat clean. And um, I don't know if you ever use um, the, the the firm base as the as the mat. You can of course do this here as well. Saying that I haven't really used it, but it does pick up sort of fibers from just being carried around. There's lots coming, lots coming off. Really love this um, mat, this brush. It's quite a strong rubber, two rubber blades side by side, and it's super. I, I mean, we haven't managed to break one of these yet. Um, we do do them in different colors. However, you don't get a choice of the color. You just have to order it and just keep your fingers crossed that you get the color you you had um, your heart set on or drop us a, a note and, and ask nicely. We might be able to, to help you with it. Right, so Scarecrow now has got... Um, he has got his scarf on. Remember that this wire here at the back is, is helping him to stand. It's like the third leg, so you might need to put that into position, but it does definitely help him stand. And um, of course, you can also stick it into the ground. If you've got a plant pot, wherever you want to put your scarecrow, then you can um, put, put that wire in there as well. I'm just trying to give him a nice position rather than sort of looking like he's, um, he's had a few gins already. And it's quite a small area there. There you go. So it does make him stand, but at the same time, you can also use this um, wire to stick in the plant pot. There's plenty of it. And then he also stands in the plant pot. So um, that's basically what we're doing with um, with the scarf. And then that, the next thing I'm going to do is the hair. But I'm going to have a little read of what's going on here and, and see what makers products you love and why. Right. Um, so we have got, oh, we've got some more people. Oh, by the way, give us the thumbs up. Um, tell other people about us. We would love you to be our word of mouth and uh, get a subscribe to the channel. Um, and um, yeah, that would be amazing. So also just to let you know, talking about all these new products, also our Advent project. Finally, it's going to be available um, to pre-order on Friday this week. So that would be the 3rd of September. As of the 3rd of September, you can pre-order the Advent Project's Animals in the Wood. And all I will say is it's going to be a big wall hanging, about that big. And um, each week you will add a little bit to the scene, but you won't see the finished finished project until literally a week before Christmas. Um, or in fact, not even then. You will see it, well, you see it come together, but you will see the final thing on the last day when you open your fourth and final um, little parcel that will give you the ingredients and the instructions to make the final um, picture complete. It's going to be amazing. You'll love it. I know you will love it. Um, we're there to support you as well. And it's just for a bit of fun. Um, leading up to Christmas, making sure you get that me time when <clears throat> the world around you goes probably quite crazy, especially this year. It's probably, well, it's one of the first years in two years where we might have a, a normal Christmas. Who knows? So, um, yeah, you, you stick to your me time and um, we will be here by, by your side as well. So let's see. So we've got Donna in the house as well. Oh, Rose says, I just love the felting mat cleaner that I bought from you. Excellent. Well, and I, I also demoed it without even um, reading the comment. Um, Ashley says, my favorite product is the structural core felt. It helps me with um, sculptures, especially vehicles. Yeah, it's a great one, actually, because you can make um, literally um, a whole, whole shape 
instantly. So you can use it for tree trunks. You can use it. We used it for our pigsty. So you can scroll through our um, live streams and the, the, the we've used it there on pigsties. We've had it as a base for the elephant, for the safari, Sahara type, um, savanna, whatever it's called, um, background. Um, we've had it, what else have we used it for? Um, cut basket. You can make a real one out of it if you want. Um, so yeah. Um, okay, let's keep going through those. Catherine says, yes, it was my village flower show. That's it. A village flower show. That's what I was looking for. I entered lots of different categories, including woolen craft and one with my felting. Excellent. Marian says, my favorite is the earth mat. I love the size and the feel when using it. Thank you, Marian. Donna says, favorite maker's product is the staff, as they have such good ideas. <laughs> Can't buy us. <laughs> Well, you can try. I might be for sale. <laughs> you never know. Uh, provide fantastic tutorial. Get orders packed up beautifully and out quickly. Thank you, Donna. I shall pass that on to the rest of the team as well. Denise says, I love the accessories. They can, can completely change your felt. Um, always improving. Thank you. Um, oh, we've got Liz in the house. She's a new one. Um, um, not necessarily new, but new join, joined us. Um, Vampire Venom says, I love everything, but need the landscape tops from the paint a picture surprise books as I use them all enthusiastically. Oh, Meg says, I love my earth mat. It's always on my work table. Donna says, when are Mr. and Mrs. Tomter coming up for sale? Yes, when indeed. Well, they're coming also um, this Friday, so you don't have to wait for much longer. I will uh, show you them in a minute again. And Mel says, I love the London Ridge core wool. It felt so well and is literally at the core of my projects. Brilliant. Helen says, favorite project, the maker subscription box, Earthmat, does sec close second. Oh, thank you, Helen. Um, <laughs> I think you're referring to, are you referring to um, my elves? Pull the other one, it's got bells in it. You can't just drop these sentences in there. You're just confusing me and throwing... Um, Okay, yes, so Emma is saying that Mr. and Mrs. Tomter will be online this Friday, which is the 3rd of September as well. Uh, favorite project is the London Ridge wool, as it felt so beautifully. Another one for the for the London Ridge. Vampire Venom says, all the curls as well. More Tomter and Grandad, as my housemaid calls them. Aww. Uh Catherine says, there is so much I love on the website, but I think the sub box says... Oh, oh. I'm, I'm always mortified that I report somebody or block somebody because I keep hovering with my finger over the comment and then the option comes up. So if anybody gets blocked or reported or whatever, the police knocks on your door. It's my fault, okay? Um, so the, the sub boxes are Catherine's favourites. As you've got lovely surprises and makes every month. Thank you, Catherine. Ashley says, in, is, is the snowman white Cape Merino? Will the black Cape Merino? Yes, yes, yes. And the other bit I've already answered. So the, the snowman also has this beautiful white Cape Merino on as a surface. It is literally like a, um, a dusty cover of snow. Um, a dusting, not dusty. It doesn't look dusty. And... Um, Everything is my favorite, says Serena, but I will have to say the maker's box. Oh, thank you. And C Choi says, I cannot choose my favorite. There is a reason why I'm only subscribed to, um, but everything from the makers ever since I discovered needle felting. Maybe top faves include the, faves include the live tutorials. Oh, thank you. That's so lovely to say. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think we just did that to get a, a, a huge um, ego massage, Emma have a feeling but no it's really good to know what your favorites are um including paper instructions says see Choi. best out there clear with pictures easy to follow and detailed also the sweetie jars and mixed bags fairy boxes too excellent for beginner discovering new fibers great oh thank you that's exactly what we had in mind i'm really pleased it's working liz says really love the materials and that they are environmentally friendly the packaging too also love all the tips and videos. So useful. Yeah, and we're continuing down that route of, of uh, caring for the environment and um, trying to reduce our carbon footprint, trying to be, be more local, even more than we already are, and certainly trying to convert more of the recyclable products into compostable products because we're already working with wool. We've got a huge advantage over most people um, in, in different industries. Um, I love the advent calendar as... Oh, yes, Advent Colour. We haven't mentioned that in a while. You can still buy one. Um, get a bit of everything. Also love the Christmas 
um, hogs last year. Hope there's something similar this year. So it's not going to be the hoggies. It's going to be the Advent um, project, which is a, um, a wall hanging um, of, and the theme is animals in the wood. And you'll love it. I promise you, you'll love it. It's really, really nice. Um, the earth mat is fab, although I have got mine in a state as I have the A5 and do a lot of 2D pictures. Oh dear. Maybe you should get um you should get a new top layer. You can buy these layers separately. So if you need to um refresh it, get a new one over the top. Also, um a useful tip is people who do 2D actually quite like using the um firmer base mat on the top for for felting on rather than the soft mat. So both both still both together, but the other way around. Um, I love the Makers London and Rich Corbo, says Bridget. Hello, Bridget, all the way from Australia. Susan is there. I love the Angelina as it puts sparkle in my life. Yes, and everybody else's. Um, Diana says she's just got her brush. It's fabulous. And my favorite is the twisted steel wire. It makes such delicate fairies. I know this twisted steel um, wire was a lucky find and um, I'm using it all the time now. Um... So uh, I just love all the products I've had from you, says Jane. Thank you, Jane. You're one of our, definitely one of our groupies, aren't you? Um, we love you very much. Carol says, I love the water soluble paper because it's just amazing, versatile, amazingly versatile for 2D needle felting and for adding details to 3D models too. Excellent. Bridget says, I love the Zooms and live YouTube tutorials. Keeps the fluffy friends connected. Nice one. Right. Let's continue on um, the scarecrow. That's what we're here for. He's got, his head is getting cold. It's actually talking about cold. It's getting really cold out there. <laughs> I sort of reluctantly took my my um, extra layer off. Um, it's definitely cold, colder. The days are drawing in. Bridget, you're in the other on the other side, and you have the opposite happening. Your days will be getting longer. Hours are hours are getting shorter, and definitely colder. And um, ah, it's not my favorite time of the year. Sorry, I just cannot be persuaded otherwise. Um, yeah, I do like I do like spring and summer. I'm I'm one of those anyway we all have our faves um let's have a look what's happening here with um the not so scary scarecrow i thought that was a really good weekend wisdom if you haven't seen it um on our facebook page then go and have a look what um hannah wrote up about um scarecrows and why they're called scarecrows and um and so on so the hair now you've got a really soft um wool here this is actually one that we don't stock regularly we've just literally put in here for the scarecrow we have similar yarns but this one is definitely a super soft one it's an alpaca and um alpaca yarn and it has got um it's really fluffy and 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 um and lovely and all you're going to do is you are basically going to work in um in in batches of strands and you take about eight to twelve strands of the alpaca hair yarn and lay them onto the side of the head as shown above and you have to make them first of all so the these strands can be as short or as long as you want them to be that's entirely up to you but what I do is I basically use my fingers to have a consistent length and I just wrap them around here so you can make short or long hair and all I'm doing is wrapping them into a loop and that's about two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's go with the middle. So ten strands wrapped around my my um, hand. And then I'm going to take my scissors, take them off here, cut, cut it off. So now I've got a, um, a little rolled up um, bundle of, of yarn. And all I'm going to do now is I am going to um, cut these in half. So top and bottom. And then I'm going to start covering my scarecrow's um, head from the side. So I've inadvertently have added have doubled up these um, loops now, so I've actually gone for twenty here instead of um, eight or twelve, because I've obviously um, doubled it up. And all you're going to do is you're felting them in in the center. So spread them out. Don't have them bunched up. Spread them out, and you're felting them on in the center. And then you're folding it um, over and felt a little bit more. So you actually want the longer. Um, the longer strands you want them to 
um, to f to hang free, but you do have to felt them on initially in the center and then you can adjust it a little bit around wherever you want to. Now you can uh, give the hair, this hair crow, the scarecrow, um, you can give the hair crow a full scare of, um, um, yeah, full, full, give the, give the scarecrow full hair. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm also being silly. And, um, and, and you work your way around the head or you can leave a little bit at the top uncovered because if you leave it uncovered, then at least you can put the scarecrow's hat in sort of a gap and it doesn't sit on top of the hair too much. So you can build that into your design if you like, um, or just put the hair wherever you like. So this time I'm only going for six. So that's um, three, four, five, six. Cut it. Cut it into individual strands. Lay it onto the side of the head. Spread it out so that it, it goes um, along. You cover a larger area. Felt it down in the center. Mind you've got a wire inside if you are unlucky enough to hit that one there. So you're trapping basically the strands of wool in there and then you can um, let it sort of do its own thing by folding it over. And that way you're going to cover the whole of the head. So do plan it a little bit um, by distributing it evenly around the head. But that's basically what you're doing. Cut the loops open. Oh, missed one there. And then work your way around the scarecrow's head. So you obviously um, want to make sure you've got enough wool to cover all of the head, but there should be plenty of wool. You get, you're getting, in fact, you probably get more than what you need unless you give it an extra thick layer or you do what I just did and um, actually cut way too many loops there. Um, I'm going to have to do the same on the other side now. So he's not um, wonky. Come around it a bit off more often. Cut it open everywhere, both ends. If you miss a loop, don't worry, you'll soon enough find it later. It's a little bit awkward getting to his head because he's got his arms sticking out and you can't pose them. Um, I mean, you could bend them, but you, you might not want to. So you have to work with um, with him in that in that position, which might be a little bit awkward, but I'm sure you can manage. Stab the wool in in the center, fold the side the other side over, and then uh, work your way around the whole of. Oh, he's got hair in his mouth there. Where's this going? Let's have a look at him. Yeah, that's okay. A little bit more on. I'm going to do the sides first and then I fill in the back. And then you can trim his hair, obviously, if you want to. So filling in the last bit here. I'm sure there are better ways of being a little bit more planned about this, maybe starting at the back and working your way up to the front. But I always think, well, let's get the front covered because that is what, you, what you're going to see when you're looking at him. And um, the back, you can be a little bit more compromising if need be. You can, of course, have the hair sort of going into his face. You can even felt it down like that. So um, just because it's fastened on a bit further back, you can still... Um, deal with that after when you when you're ready to finish him and then just cover the back um, and you could do that in one go if you if you didn't have enough wool left by just making a longer strand can obviously you could fasten it on from the top it doesn't have to be fastened um, from the center the back is um, nobody's going to look so much at the back so you could fasten it just at the top Still cut your loops. And I'm just going to cover that now by stabbing the wool in. Basically, just cover the head with um, hair as best as you can. And um, you can adjust it in a minute still by just stabbing into it and um, distributing the wool around. 
or you can be really precise and take ages to put it, every single strand on separately for all I care. Um, maybe maybe you want to do that and make a perfect a perfect hairdo. But he's a scarecrow and he's sort of um, in you know he's he's not perfect and that's to me he is perfect anyway. So all his hair is on now. And then you're going to have to um, decide whether you need to sort of trim it a bit if you want to um, adjust it. Maybe there's a bit sticking out that you're not so sure about. Cut it off however you want. And finally, he's ready for his hat. Now the hat, as I said, is too small for him. Um, but I think it looks really funny to have it sort of maybe sitting on the side of his head like that and um, and you could um, just give it a massive big of dollop of glue and um, make sure that you leave it um, leave it to dry and uh, fasten that onto the side of his head. Now I, I only ever use our glue sticks and um, our bottle glue so that seems to be working fine for anything we use but to do that, I put a massive big um, portion on the rim of the hat. Be generous. Could put um, maybe, I don't know, a hairpin in there, but then that might make it dangerous. And, um, and then all you need to do is put it on his head. Make sure it's exactly where you want it to be push down and then leave it to dry and basically that is your little scarecrow finished and whilst he's drying I'm gonna get ready to make the little Mises. So sitting here with one hand on my scarecrow's hat um, I'm obviously waiting for this to dry. Um, just reminding everybody who've joined late, if you don't know what the question is today to win yourself one of our witches um, little needle felting packs, then um, the question today is, uh, today's prize, where have you gone there? We would like you to know, we would like you to um, tell us um, what is your favorite maker's product and why? And um, uh, Emma, Today on the 31st of August, Tuesday at 1 p.m. when we started is going to choose a winner very shortly. And Hannah on the 2nd of September at 7 p.m. over on Facebook at our Facebook page, The Makers, is going to choose a winner then for um, answering the same question. So, um, yeah, do let us know what is your favorite product and why. And, um, yeah, we happily hear about it. And do um, give us the thumbs up on this video and also tell all your friends about it. Shout it out from the rooftop that um, they can learn to needle felt with the makers. So what else? What el Oh, yes, um, the Tomton. So basically, these are the Tomton. They're, they're quite large. I mean, that is the whole point. This is the largest, probably the largest Tomton um, um, sort of product that we have done. They come as separate packs. So you buy either Mr. or Mrs. Tomter or both together, but they are separate um, to be purchased. So they've got, um, they're really heavy because what they have got is um, a stone basically pushed up their bottoms. <laughs> There's no other way of saying this, um, which makes them really nice and like a, a satisfying weight. You don't have to do this. They can just be really light, but I really like it that they are, uh, feel a little bit more substantial, which you couldn't achieve so easily with wool. It comes, our um, our favorite lanolin, lanolin rich core is part of this. You get our Australian Merino for um, the, the, the cheeky cheeks and the noses. There are eyes in there. So they have got um, glue in eyes, which you will um, needle felt into it. And then they have got um, the hair on, on Mrs. Tomte is more hair, the more hair tops. And on Mr. Tomte are the gray natural um, Merino um, tops and they have obviously different colored bodies different color but not too different so different colored um, reds and greens there and um, and then you make their arms separate and their feet as well so that's basically going to be a live stream coming up as well 
and the packs will be available to purchase on Friday the 3rd. So if you're watching on Thursday, you only got to wait another day. And if you're watching today, you have to wait another um, three days. Not too long, not too long. And uh, just to remind you again, what's coming up in our live stream schedule is uh, the following. So we are going to uh, do the large pumpkin for two days on the 7th and the 14th of September. That's um, starting next week, Tuesday, and then the following week. And then September the 21st, we're doing the witch. And then we have got um, a couple of dates in um, in September and October for the Toadstool House. Now, I will just say very quickly, the Toadstool House is quite big. I'll bring it um, next time. It's about that tall. Our Enchanted Forest Wool Mix is great for it, but it's not enough. What you need more of is definitely core wool and um, the lanolin rich core would be absolutely amazing. And the top, the cover of the toadstool, the red, there is variegated red in the Enchanted Forest mix, but um, I'm using our poppy red for the roof. So all you would have to, sub to uh, supplement um, is, the, is the lanolin rich core and then another red. And um, unless you want to stick with a variegated red, then just get a little bit more of that. But what's really interesting is, or what not interesting, what's exciting is that there's so much decoration on the outside of the roof, you will find what you need to make the decorations, like the pebbles and the flowers and the doors and the windows and everything else, you will find um, in the Enchanted Wool Mix. And um, and there's, there's lots and lots of lovely fibers in there, including our fairy mix and our dragon mix. And then you get curls in there as well. So it's, it is a really good wool mix to um, get your um, toadstool house finished with all the, with all the um, bells and whistles. I think that's what people say in this country, um, bells and whistles. Right, so we're going back to making little mice now for the scarecrow. And for this, we've got our different browns left. The, um, the browns can either be used as they are, or you can mix them. That's entirely up to you. Um, you can certainly mix the wool to make slightly different colored ears. So let's start with, or let's start with a dark brown mouse because it's the most contrasting. So all you need is a, is a wisp of this um, brown wool. And you're going to roll this into a little sausage. So do this with your fingers, roll it nice and tight and neat into a small sausage. And once you've done that, then give it a few stabs all over, just so that it doesn't pop open. And then you're going to work on it so that you have one pointy end, which is obviously gonna be the snout of the nose of the little mouse. One pointy end, felt that down and then one round end. Now you're gonna have to be careful with your fingers here because you are working very close to your, um, well, to, you have to hold your hand very close to where you're stabbing. This needle is bent, how did I manage that? Well, let's use a different one. And um, a coarse needle will do, though you might have to go down to a medium needle for this. Just stab it all, all around its bum. You can reduce the size of the mouse by sort of going in into it lengthways. If, if it's too long, then stab into it lengthways. Not Don't make it blunt by stabbing right into the nose, but just, just past the nose, go into it lengthways. And that will reduce the, um, the length of it. And then you might have to adjust it otherwise again. So make a little, a little pointy, um, pointy shape. And, um, and then it goes even smaller. So that's my first little mouse there. Looks more like a, I don't know, looks like a ferret poo actually. My ferret's poo, that shape. And then you can use a little bit of the, um, of the, um, the light color and you can actually use a tiny bit of the orange that you've got left over for the mouse to make a pink. So do mix these two together and you might be um, able to get a new shade which is a pink, pink shade. I'm not just mixing it, I'm actually tearing the fibers because it's a long fiber, that um, fox sheep. And um, I'm trying to um, to make a pink color now. And But I don't want the fibers to be super long because I'm only making tiny little, um, little ears. So I'm actually tearing the fibers. I'm not just mixing it. I'm literally separating the fibers to make them shorter. 
so I can make a smaller shape. And with all, with anything that you do that you sort of mix, you can always add a little bit more of one or the other color into it if it's not um, the right um, consistent shape, shade yet. Don't want to make it too um, pink or too red. And then you're just literally felting it down into a tiny little shape. So this is similar to what you did with the scarf, but this time you're keeping it um, nice and flat and just going in a circular motion to let the fibers pull in, keep pulling it off your mat and then start tucking the wispy ends that are sticking out on the side inward. And you make two of the same. And when I'm ready to insert the little mouse into the, um, into the scarecrow's um, Top. That's when we're going to announce the winner for today's competition. And um, I will announce the one for the Tuesday one and for the Thursday one, Hannah will do this on Facebook via the comments section. So as soon as I'm ready to insert the mouse into um, a hole that will, I will cut into the hessian, then Emma will let me know who's, who she's drawn as a competition winner today. Right, here we go. So, getting a second ear ready. So I've got two little, tiny little patches here. It's, it's, it's not that precise and you don't have to be that precise. And now I'm going to attach them to the mouse by just stabbing very gently into, into there. You might want to get um, go and take a finer needle. I'm going for... Um, as I'm going for a fine twisted needle or you could use a medium standard needle. You could probably use a, a fine one as well. So I'm fastening one ear to one side of the head and then the other ear. So I'm using these wispy fibers that are still sticking out to stab the ear and to fasten the ear into the head. So this, it definitely pays off that you've made that shape um, quite firm of the mouse to start with. And um, you see it better on a lighter colored mouse, but uh, you can use the black wool that you used for the scarecrow's mouth to make two little um, black eyes on either side. Let's literally stab them into place. It's very hairy work here at the moment. It looks all a bit, it's not very fine wool, but it will be absolutely fine just for um, a little decoration on, on the scarecrow's um, top. And then stop the other one in there as well. And you could give your mouse a little pink nose if you wanted to as well. Um, especially if you're making a brown mouse. Just something else to sort of um, offset the color. If you have a little bit of that mix to make a little now a nose. And, um, and then what you need to do is either, if you have been um, organized and your scarecrow is quite posh and, um, and civilized, and might have a proper frock on, but mine has just got a scruffy top of a hessian on him. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut now. The hat, oh, hat is getting settled quite nicely there. I'm going to cut a hole into him using my little scissors. That might feel a bit weird cutting holes into clothes. Normally they happen accidentally. So I'm just making um, like a cross cut so um, so that I've got a, a hole here now. So I'm not cutting actually any fabric out. I'm literally just cutting into it. So I've got a hole and I'm going to poke my mouse. You don't need to make any tails because they're actually stuck in there. Push it in with the scissors and little mouse is popping poking out here and then you could stab it into um, the scarecrow because it's filled with wool so it it will be nice and solid in there and you've got a little mouse sticking its head out at, at you there you go and then you can do this um, all over maybe not just have oh my goodness I've got oh no look what's happened I hope that hasn't happened to you I've actually got oh well okay he's got a mouse coming out of his back 
my head's turned. Well, not my head, but the scarecrow's head is turned. This is what I was fearful might happen, but no damage done. He's just got a mouse coming out of the back of him. Um, you do need to keep the wire at the back of the scarecrow. And in all this um, making the scarf and adding more hair and head, the, the head is actually still, um, still moves around. So you could, um, and I never put the glue in here to fasten um, the wire on. So that it's not a, it's not a big deal. It just means that your head might be um, going round and round. So I'm going to um, um, have to put a few more mice in the front because he hasn't got any showing there at all. Let's just quickly make another one, this time with a um, cream colored wool. And you can of course use the, um, the wool that we used for stuffing as well. So you can at least make three colored, dif three different colored mice, or you can make even more colors um, if you mix the wools together into a new shade of brown. Um, so there's lots of options that you can do for the little mouse. And I'm making a super quick, super fast little mouse here at the moment, just so that I can have one in the front of his, um, his dress. And I swear I had some of that mixed wool but can't find it now. I'm gonna have to mix something else quickly. So with the, the idea with these mice is not to put an awful lot of detail on them because you, um, with the smaller you needle felt anything, the less details you need to add. Um, it's it's sort of our eyes just interpret what what our brain wants to see, or our brain interprets what our eyes want to see. Probably that way around. And um, and so just a little just enough features for us to recognize that this is a mouse rather than a ferret poo. That's all it takes. And um, and you can make mice in no time. And I'm sure that Emma has by now drawn the winner, so I'm waiting for her to give me the heads up what the, who that is, and I will be announcing the winner any minute now. And if you have to rush off, I hope I'm finishing on time today, so... Um, if this is your lunch break entertainment. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have so many of you on board and knowing that we're making a difference to um, to you all. And if you find us via YouTube, then do go onto our uh, website um, www.themakers.co.uk and and um, you can join us on at our Facebook group, Everyone a Maker. Um, and um, and our Facebook group, our Facebook page is actually, if you want to tag us, is it's um, themakers.co.uk. That's our Facebook handle. It sounds like a web address, but it's actually our Facebook name. Just giving my mouse little eyes whilst I'm chatting away here. So the, the white mouse is probably a bit more recognizable as a mouse because um, you can see more of the features against the lighter colored body. Just a little nose. There we go. And we've got a winner today on Tuesday, the 31st of um, August. And it is Mel A. So well done, Mel A. All you need to do is uh, drop us a line to info at themakers.co.uk and, um, and then um, let us know that you've won and we will post out a witch, a witch pack to you. And then you can um, hopefully join us for the live stream when we're making the witch together. And while I, whilst I've been chatting, I have added the little mouse into his uh, front this time. So he's got a mouse at the front and a mouse at the back. And um, we need loads more all around, put maybe. And um, if you've got pockets, then just let the mouse poke out of the pocket. And that is basically all there is to needle felting a scarecrow. Um, we This was part three you've just been uh, um, watching and he's all ready and looking good. His hat needs a little bit more uh, time to dry. He's got a full head of hair. He's got a mouse coming out of um, the back of his uh, top and one out of the front. He's got nice um, one leg slightly shorter than the other but um, I'm sure we can pull it a bit longer or push the or make the other one a bit shorter whichever way and um, can't wait to see lots more of your scarecrows do um, share them with us on our Facebook group everyone a maker 
and um and tag us or on instagram we have got an instagram uh, account as well and that is just um as it says there squiggly bit the makers with two s's uh, if you're not following us yet uh, do follow us and the same on facebook if you are not a follower or if you haven't liked our page yet then please go and like our page and tell your friends about us and that's all I've got to say today so thank you very much for watching and it, it's been a pleasure and next week we're starting on the pumpkins bye everybody